In this video, we're going to look at a feature that the newer versions of Webpack have included. Uh, since Webpack 2, um, code splitting is now something that automatically happens when you do a dynamic import of something uh, on demand. So what that means is, and here we've used again the Create React app scaffolding tool to create a boilerplate React project for us, and it's got a built-in development server, which oops, which we are going to launch with whoop, yeah, npm start here. Up it comes. But what we're going to look at is. how that happens, and how to deal with dynamically loaded code split modules, and how to do that dynamic load in the first place. So we're going to introduce a few different features of VS 2015, uh, module loading, Webpack, and we are going to make use of that in tandem with React here, as per our other videos. So if we go to our network tab, we'll note that everything's in one bundle. Uh, it all comes down in and big JavaScript bundle after Webpack spits it out uh, by default. We can, of course, if we spend the time and uh, pull apart the Create React app scripts, notice that uh, Webpack config here uh, has a few different options. You could uh, take common chunks and spit them into other files and let Webpack try to optimize on its own. But, you know, uh, for example, in React, we've already taken the time to uh, separate our concerns into different components. So we may have a specific strategy in mind for when and when not to load specific components. So with that being said, let's uh, add a new component and then we'll try and figure out a way to laser load it. So we'll say um, my component. And we'll create a fairly straightforward component here using the ES6 class syntax. And render function. And we'll make our default export for this new module, that component. All right. So now look back here and that's not going to update. Uh, Webpack Watch won't see that because we haven't touched anything yet. So we've got this app intro now. I'll just wipe that out. Okay. And now we could traditionally just go do this. And that's not lazily loaded, but it's all baked into one bundle. But if we did want to lazy load it, what we could do instead would be something like say we'll use an async function here, a new feature, and what we will do is Let's not do that. Let's make some kind of non-ideal state indicator. So we'll say try and 
be consistent here for our example. an error. The shape of our state will not change. It will just state so that when it completes it will force a re-render the canonical way to update component state. As much as we try to avoid using component state, we should do it correctly, and we do. And then finally, we're not necessarily just using the whole module, we are using its default export, the component. Once that's loaded, we get its default. Oh, actually, we want to instantiate the class we made. We're not. Useless constructor. It is. And we're going to remove that from. What well, seems to be pulling in the chunk, and there's no indication this is failing. So let's try to render it. Oops. Lazy loaded component. Oh, so again, there's the component. We can briefly see it's not loaded. So that's again where our spinner would be, our loader. But what is cool here is that with very little overhead, we have uh, sort of broken apart the concerns and allowed our loading to happen quickly because the upfront bundle can be smaller. And then as we need certain functionality, we can uh, progressively load different submodules or code split chunks as desired. Um, we, of course, don't need to necessarily do this when the component mounts. We could do it arbitrarily at some event the user might trigger. trigger. view in the state. Poor choice. We'll instead say that this is the fall through case of there being no lazy loaded component.
and you can see how you'd extend this scheme, build some sort of scheduler, find a way to cache components, possibly keeping a checksum in a local storage based database of the files that you want to load at runtime and cache, things that you want to verify as assets, but generally keep local, things that you would like to hydrate with the server and persistently, but maybe not too aggressively, keep casually consistent with the remote server. There are many ways in which you can use this dynamic code splitting strategy. Webpack 2 and greater will do this for you automatically. You can either use system.import or just import as a sort of keyword here to achieve this effect. Hope this was helpful.